doing stuff and things like do things like merging into the correct lane like bones how about you so things did you do with your day so things do you do hey hey not being particularly musically educated. Rhyming and coming up with tunes on the fly is surprisingly difficult for me. I wonder if other people have this issue. And I wonder if any of that was even audible because I wasn't really enunciating. Enunciating. So I'll be driving around, doing stuff, and I'll think, you know what I should talk about? Blah, 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 blah. And then, lo and behold, the time will come when I'm actually in the car with the camera running, and I don't remember what any of these topics are. Maybe I just need to whip out the camera and start recording and then I'll have all these clips that I can just piece together and or use as a jumping point. I don't, I don't know what the, the next step is there. Do I, do I need to go all in, get like Google Glass and then, uh, and then whenever I tell it, say, Glass, start recording. <laughs> Let it start going or something. I need to start keeping the, the Google thing active on my phone. I don't need to start doing that. It, it's got this really bad tendency to try and voice dial whenever I plug headphones in, um, which I may have expressed already. It feels like a thing I've told people about. So. That's irritating. Eee! Oh, that was fun. I bet you didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. I can stop a little hard there. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do about this insane chaos. I, I bet that's uh, fun to look at, that mess there. Okay, there we go. Is it pointed at my face? Who knows? Who knows what it's pointed at? It could be pointed at anything. <clears throat> I could turn it around and make it another forward facing one. Sorry about that. I bet that was sort of confusing and probably really loud. I'll maybe I'll see if I can scrub the audio there so it doesn't hurt when you're listening. I have ordered a new mount for my phone, which will either put it on the dashboard or on the windshield be great when I'm having it film me or something and I just have to learn how to angle this thing properly so that it's actually pointing at me. Mirrors. I'm not really paying attention where I'm going which is a bad way to navigate. It should be more stable though, which will be nice, because I bet this has been all janky. All manner of jank. What's going on in the world today? Ah, crazy people being crazy. Um, I have read that China in particular is making a huge push for renewable energy sources and low carbon impact energy sources push away from coal and toward hydro, solar, and wind, um, which is massive. And, and I, I feel like the people that I talk about this with regularly, I, 
I feel like whenever I bring up good news like this, I think that's really good news. I think they're taking it or hearing in my tone something like, well, that's solved, on to the next problem, which is not true, but I, I need to at least feel like, you know, progress has been, has been made, otherwise, why bother? Because I feel like every time I bring this up, it instantly turns into, well, the whole world is screwed, we're all gonna die, and we've ruined everything. And, okay, so do I shoot myself? Like, are we just done now? Do we just give up? I'm not going to call it a failure just because we're not all the way there yet. I'm glad that some change has been made. I I hope we keep making more change. I don't know that we can reverse the, the damage that we've done so far, and we're probably going to look at a completely unrecognizable world in a hundred years or so. But, I mean, it, at least we're doing something. Too little too late is still better than nothing at all. I'm not gonna ride that roller coaster down to oblivion. Ah Whoa. A lot of people on the road? Why why are we going so slow? Why is it so slow? It's it's not that early. Is there a traffic thing? There was some traffic there. I really need to put these videos up, start posting them, and then just do it. Just do it and go, and then there will be hours of, of backlog, and someone will get introduced to it and go, Oh, did he say other cool things? And look at it and go, Whoa, I'm not going to watch that whole thing. And I, I just need to suck it up and do it except that the early videos are not going to be seen by much of anyone that this is all this this I am doing for me I need to remember that and and keep doing that if I'm not doing this for me I'm not going to enjoy it I'm not going to want to keep doing it if I'm not doing it for me then there isn't really much point since I'm kind of speaking into kind of talking into a void at this point. I do enjoy doing these, actually. I think I like it. So, I need to keep doing it, and that's that's what I'm going to do. Last video, I think I talked about New Year's resolutions. And I don't know if I explicitly stated it. That's, that's going to be my resolution. I'm going to keep doing these. And improve the process, and Improve the the quality of the content, and I don't know. Something in me feels like there has to be a long-term goal for it, but I don't think there does. There doesn't need to be a long-term goal. Short-term goals are, I suppose, okay. There doesn't. I don't think there has to be an ultimate plan. Um, like like my long-term goal is to someday get hired by a think tank who actually wants me to produce content for them. I, I don't think that's my goal. Honestly, I think I, I think I should just enjoy doing these for, for doing them. You know? The, there doesn't have to be a, a life goal around having a cheeseburger. Right? You just do it because you want one. Which is a curiously specific example since I don't eat cheeseburgers very often. Maybe it's the right example, because I, I don't very often. Which I guess is the opposite of this, since I do this all the time. So maybe it's like sunflower seeds. Like I don't have a life goal when I eat sunflower seeds. I just do it because I like it. And and this, this drive time, it's not like I'm doing anything else during this drive time. I'm listening to music on the radio. It's usually the same music, so I kind of enjoy this just as much. Um, um, yeah. 
I bet I can put together some little fun extra bits, things walking around type videos. I, I don't know. Uh, I just got a visualization of myself. It's like a selfie stick walking around talking at this selfie stick and that. That's terrible. That's a terrible thing. I don't want that to be my life. <laughs> So, yeah. Looks like we might be in this for a little while. That's fine. Ugh. Ugh. I'm all shook up. So, ugh, crazy stuff. Uh, I, um, I don't know if I'll include any of it. I, like, I try to avoid... But while I was sitting in my car waiting to get out of the parking lot, I thump on the back of it and I turned to look and there was one person with a backpack and, I don't know, dark clothing and dreadlocks, it's not just a long hair of some variety, being chased by two or three other people. And I think he tripped and fell and picked himself up before they got to him, but ran across the street and then was thrown down and there were four people kicking him. And one of them had a skateboard and might have been trying to hit him with it. And I think they were shuffled off by someone who probably knew the first person because they walked off together. And they just sort of meandered their way across the road which it's a really busy intersection people do that all the time just walk across it and obviously I have no way of knowing the story like did he attack some guy and then get chased down by three of that guy's best friends did did the three guys get offended by him and decide they really needed to beat him up like what what's the story I don't really know so I can't judge it. I, I want to be on the side of the guy who was chased because generally I disapprove of beating people up. But I have no idea what... The, and I, I don't approve of, like, generally victim blaming. Like, oh, he must have done something to, to warrant it. That, that's not necessarily true. Maybe the other people were violent assholes. I have no idea. And even then, like, that's, that's attribution error and... and they were people performing violent asshole-ish behavior and not necessarily inherently violent people. I don't I don't know who any of these people are, what their stories are, and I'm all shaken up by it. I don't know. That was weird. There's, is it like a flawed part of me that's trying to pass judgment on the scene? Like, I think that's the, the narrativist part of me, is that the, the bit of me that's the bit of human psychology that wants everything to fit neatly into a plot and into narratives, and it was just a thing that happened. It doesn't have to have, like, grand reason. There doesn't have to be universal meaning in it. It just happened, and it sucked. Probably, I mean, it must have done, right? Everyone's being all violent and angry. It must have sucked for someone. Someone. I mean, I, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm at the point where I shift over and then get into my exit lane, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip it. It's super busy out here tonight, so instead of getting into that lane right now, um, I'm gonna wait until I get past the fairly significant snarl of all the people trying to get on and off this exit here and then we'll get yeah like here which you can't see any of this so none of that really would mean anything <laughs> to the to the viewers at home yeah 
maybe there wasn't a broad meaning in it. There weren't, like, there wasn't a, someone on the right side of it or someone on the wrong side of it. it was just stuff that happened and it sucked. Because I think there's a part of me that tries to fit everything into this grand narrative structure, and it, it's probably fairly common amongst humans to try and do this, and it doesn't have to. I Stories don't have to have that, right? Or, I mean, the real world, I guess. The real world doesn't have to have that. Okay, you know what? If you really need to get past me to get over, you can do that. I'm gonna get over here, and then I'm gonna get over here, because I'm gonna go up that way. All right. should really read Ulysses. Um, because that might be something that suits the the sense I'm trying to get at. I think that's what I liked about The Grace of Wrath so much. I, I actually liked that book. I hated the tortoise chapters. I thought they were really dumb. And it was the way it was presented and possibly the way it was written was aggressively heavy-handed symbolism and it's it's just really annoying to see that. Aggressive heavy-handedness in the, the symbolism. If you're gonna tell a story, tell a story. You don't have to hide your moral behind the semblance of the story. Is the way I felt about it. Um, but for the most part, I actually liked The Grapes of Wrath. And everyone I know, everyone I've talked to, hated that book. Vehemently. Passionately hated it. And one thing that I particularly liked, that I think everyone really hated, is the way that it ended. Because it doesn't have an ending in a classic plot sense. Spoiler alert for people who haven't had to read The Grapes of Wrath yet. It doesn't have an ending in the classic sense of the, the plot wraps up and then we're done with the story. It just runs out of words, like in the middle of a scene almost. The, the, the book just stops. There's no more words left in it and that's the end. And I like that a lot because as hard as we try, the world doesn't fit itself into neat, clean narrative structures. It's made of a lot of things that just happen. And there isn't a broad sense to it. There's no director making it all like fit together into a coherent narrative. It's just stuff that happens. And I really like it when a, I feel like a work of literature or like a book or a movie or some kind of storytelling art is able to capture that sense of these are things that happened and they meant something to me when they happened but that doesn't mean that they're a story. And now it's time for your weekly Matthias goes off on bizarre rants of pseudo-psychology and arm, armchair analysis and tries to link everything together in a grand unified theory of the human mind, which is of course nonsense. So we're going completely off the rails, guys. Are you ready? Gals, people, folk, people, folk. I like that. We're going completely off the rails, people, folk. Where, where, where on earth was I? The narrative thing, the trying to force everything to fit a narrative story. And, oh, 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 question. Is my desire for stories that aren't stories, for anti-stories, counter-stories, contra-stories, 
non-stories? Is my desire for non-stories related to the, the general drive for realistic graphics in video games? We want to feel like we're really there, right? We want to be in the game, like it's really happening around us. So the graphics get sharper and cleaner and more real looking and physics engines get stronger and broader and more inclusive and then there's a the trend toward VR and is all of that this drive for realism and entertainment related to or to bring it backwards is my love for non-stories related to my the the human drive for realism and entertainment is that tendency manifesting itself in me based on my belief that the universe doesn't have a coherent narrative just leave that question up for for the viewer as a, an exercise for the listener is there something else I was thinking? Oh, oh, um, pareidolia, um, P-A-R-E-I-D-O-L-E-I-A, D-O-L-I-A, we'll go with D-O-L-I-A, pareidolia, which I had to look up how to spell and that's the only reason I know how to do it right now. I, was putting a lot more eyes in there than are actually necessary. Eyes. Is the psychological phenomenon of finding familiar shapes where there aren't any. Um, and it is the, the classic example is the face on Mars, which in the, the Sidonia Hills there is a plateau that from the Voyager photographs of the flyover looks eerily like a face. There's definitely a face looking out of Mars. You look up Google face on Mars and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about and it, it looks like a face, like it's spooky. And um, for the longest time, like there was a huge hubbub about it and I think there's still people who think of it as a face, but there's still people who, I mean, there's still a flat earth society, so um, take of that what you will. But clearer pictures from later orbiters, the Mars Global Surveyor and whatnot, it's ju it doesn't look like a face. It was weird lighting. It was artifacts in the camera. It was really bad resolution. It's pretty clearly just a lumpy hill that's sort of lumpy in the middle and sort of divoted toward the top. And when the light hits it and the focus is low, it does kind of look like a face. Or the man in the moon, which I only see sometime. I, I looked out like I was going to find the moon and look at it, but I'm not going to find the moon. It's Wax, it's waning crescent right now. There's no moon, and there will be new moon in less than a week. So, don't point me looking for the man in the moon right now. The moon's not even above the horizon where I'm at. I don't think. If it is, it's just barely. The man in the moon is another example because there's no actual face of a person there at all. It does kind of look like it though. And if you can't see the details very well, your brain just fills in familiar patterns and you, you see a face. I wonder if that's related. Maybe, and probably not in a meaningful way. The, the way we tend to look for and find stories where there realistically aren't any. It's, it might be related to pareidolia, but I don't think it is. Or at least not in a meaningful way. It's obviously related. They're both things that the human mind does where it fills in information that it doesn't have any. But 
but I don't think that's super insightful or useful. Do I have more to say? Grand Unified Theory of Human Cognition? That's a joke, by the way. That, in case, in case people think I'm actually trying to develop a Grand Unified Theory of Human Cognition. I am fascinated by the subject of cognition. Cognitive science is amazing stuff. I am no expert, and and it was a joke because I'm not going to find it. Let's be real. I'm, I'm an engineer, and I'm... I'm a computer technician, I'm not a psychologist. I don't study this stuff on the regular. It's not the sort of thing I keep up to date on the papers with. Um, you know what, I think I'm gonna try. Yeah, so I'm gonna end off here and pick up in a moment with moment for you. It's going to be less than that for, or more than that for me. But I, I will see about picking up with my opinions regarding armchair psychology because I have a thing to say about that.